Lord, you are great. Your name is higher than any other name. And Lord, we bless you. Lord, we lift you. Come and join us. Join us and lift the name of Jesus. That is the greatest. The name that is with power. The name that has saved us. Oh 
Yes, bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Anyway, kiswahili ni kizuri. Mungu ni mwema kila wakati. Now, today I come with bearing good news. Of course, every time and every Sunday it's time for good news. But I've been asking myself this question, by the way, um, which forms the topic of our sharing. What will it look like, sound like God inviting you for a date? Uh, yeah, God na mekombia manze, um, my son or my daughter, let's have a date. And so, uh, in my process or in my reflection of that, I couldn't help just but ask myself a number of questions. Number one, nitavaaji. You know, of course, each and every one of us, of us, if you are invited for a date, so it's a special day, it's a special event. So how you dress matters. The, the person who was invited you this particular time, it is God who has invited you for a date. So how you dress, how you smell, how you do everything, your sense of decorum, how you carry yourself, what you think you're of, about yourself that particular day matters the most. So that forms the topic of our sharing today a date with God. And so today we are going to have this demonstrated by the way, and God is going to be our guest. So today I'm here and uh, God is our guest. And so we are going to have a, a date with God this day, this wonderful morning. So since he's in our presence, shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, thank you for amazing, amazing, amazing time. Every time you allow us to come and to share your word, it's always been an amazing time. And I pray even today, Lord, open our eyes, our minds, our hearts, Lord, that we may hear your word as it instructs us, as it corrects us, as it rebukes us, as it teaches us all into all righteousness, to the glory and to the honor of your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, a date with God. Um, me, I think it would be a very exciting thing. Of course, a date will really mean perhaps you won't be indoors as I'm indoors. It could mean perhaps you'll be somewhere outside, for example, for a nature walk, or you could be somewhere on the coastlines, maybe enjoying a beautiful breeze. But anyway, it will still be a date with God. Wherever the place God will choose for you to go and have a date with him, personal one, yeah, just you and God, it will really... Of course, it will really vary. It will depend with, of course, with you as an individual because I want to believe that God will have to choose a place where it is very, very, very in touch with what you love the most. So for those of us who enjoy nature, of course, we'll be somewhere in, the, in, you know, in, 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 a, in, a, in a very nature kind of thing. For those of us who enjoy indoors, Manze, it will be beautiful somewhere indoors. For those of us who love libraries, it will be maybe somewhere just around, and there are lots of books just stacked around in shelves. So wherever the place, it will just go with the, your desires and your feelings and where you enjoy the most intimate moments when you are alone. So a date with God will also in mean that, of course, you have to prepare yourself because one thing that's for sure, God perhaps will engage you in a number of cautions. It's, it's God we are talking about here. And um, of course, if God is going to engage you in a number of questions, then that means you just have to prepare yourself. Now, knowing that the questions you'll be asking, he already knows the answer. But anyway, God will still press on and ask you a number of questions. So today we, I'm going to pull like five examples of men who I do believe one or the other, if we will put them in our context, we will, be, we will say they had a date with God. They enjoyed a very intimate moment with God and just God was there to be together with them for a number of reasons. And those number of reasons that we shall be looking at, they are somehow and they are very relevant even to this very day. Number one, we're going to look at a man called Mr. Abraham. Now, Abraham, most times, by the way, God revealed himself to him more than 15 times, you know, in dreams sometimes, sometimes in, in, in just other forms. But let's look at Mr. Abraham and uh, a date he had with God. So take us through is Genesis chapter 18, verse uh, 17 to 21, and then we're going to read verse 33. This is what the... Word of God says, I'm reading from NLT version. So, verse 17, should I hide my plan from Abraham? The Lord asked, of course he's asking himself, for Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. 
I've singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Then I will do for Abraham all that I have promised. So the Lord told Abraham, verse, verse, verse 20, I've had a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is so fragrant. I'm going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I've had. If not, I want to know. Verse 33, this is the end of that chapter. When the Lord had finished his conversation with Abraham, he went on his way and Abraham returned to his tent. Now, God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And then before he goes to do that, he invites one of his buddies called Mr. Abraham. And of course, he says, uh, he reveals his, his plan to Abraham. I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He was saying by the I'm going to check uh, if the outcry I've heard is actually very true. Now, the verses that I've scripted, of course, is just an engagement that Abraham had with God. And of course, Abraham started kind of a negotiation. So God, if you, in that city you find 50 righteous men, will you destroy them together with the other wicked? And of course, God says no. And then God, Abraham continues to reduce the number until 10, of course. So that was a conversation that Abraham had with God. We call, call it a date. So let's now zoom that into our current time. So if God were to sit down here and we are kind of a situation like the Abraham situation, what will he say today to you and me? So to some of us who will be like in Abraham kind of a situation, there's a number of things that of course God will really uh, check in. Number one, God to some of us, of course, he will come and reveal his will. Like, of course, he revealed his will to Abraham. He'll come and reveal his will to your family, to your life, to your community, to your society, to your country. Now, I do believe there are people who, even to this very day, as we live in this country, there are people that God has already revealed his will for our country, for our society, and all that is happening. There are people who have found favor with God, and God is able to reveal himself in that kind of way. So if God was to sit down here with you, and he just reveals his will of what he wants to do in your family, in your life, in your community, in your society. What will be your response? Now, one thing that, of course, God, I think, I believe he did this is so that he engages Abraham. And he wants to engage Abraham in the assignment because, of course, Abraham comes. And in that kind of negotiation and um, and, and, and kind of the dialogue and conversation that they had, we do realize that eventually his nephew Lot was saved and was delivered because of one man who interceded, and that is Mr. Abraham. So if God were to tell you of what he wants to do in your life, will you wake up into the call? Will you take up the challenge? Will you take up the assignment? Because if God reveals his will, then he definitely wants to engage you into that kind of assignment. So if we were to have a date with God and we will find ourselves in that kind of a situation that Abraham found himself into, he'll want us to engage in an assignment. So example number two is a guy called, we all know him, he's called Mr. Moses. Now Moses had a countless number of times uh, experience with God, but we are going to single out one, Exodus 33, verse 12 to 13, and then verses 17. One day Moses said to the Lord, NLT version, you have been telling me, take these people uh, up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You have told me I know you by name and I look favorably on you. If it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways so I may understand uh, you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your own very people. Verse 17, the Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for I look favorably on you, and I know you by name. Such an intimate moment. Now imagine God coming and saying that I've looked favorably on you. Favorably. Now, when I have been looking at Moses, and in relevance to what we are sharing today, a number of things kind of come up. And number one is, most of us, we are in an assignment. We, we are in a mission of some sort. And so along the way, because missions and the assignments that God gives us, they ain't just a walk in the park. I mean, they are just demanding. They, they, just, they, they just have their own battles to fight. So, and you find yourself in that kind of a situation where you just 
asking God, please work with us. And 2021 could be that year. You have got enormous amount of assignment and you don't know what to do. So if God were to zoom in and I say, by the way, my daughter, I'm inviting you for a date. Let's have a date. Let's have coffee. Let's just me and you or my son. And then you tell God, by the way, God, the assignment that you've given me, the burden that you placed in me, the business that I have, the, the organization in which I find myself and where I work, all this is that God you've given me. God, I can't do anything without your presence because we do know that actually Moses dared God. God, I'm not going here. We, please, Lord, do not send us from this place unless God you walk with us. Now, that was Moses. He dared God in that kind of thing. So the thing that I found very interesting is Moses was so daring to ask God by the way, let your favor be upon us. That as we are looking at all this, because sometimes it's possible to get yourself mixed up in the assignment and forget the give of the assignment. That we will ask God, please God, 2021, we have lots of expectations, but in this kind of a date that we have, God, we ask for your favor to go together with us. Now, with every favor that God gives, and whatever God gives you, rest, favor, it comes with the responsibilities. And those responsibilities are the ones that God intends that they be executed. So a date like the one that Moses had with God and God just, you are there asking God and some of us will find ourselves sometimes in that kind of a situation. You've got a lot of assignment and just asking God for a favor. So some of us, if we were to have a date with God, we would be asking God for a favor because of the, um, the, 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 the amount of work that is ahead of us. Example number three, we have a guy called Elijah, of course. So Elijah was a funny dude, and I like him. So Elijah, so, so our reading is uh, 1 Kings 19, uh, 11 to 13, very fast. So go out and stand before me on the mountain. Now this is the Lord telling Elijah. The Lord told him, and as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. Verse 13, when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face on his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave and a voice said what are you doing here Elijah now and to me that I picture to be in this kind of a scenario battles have come and they have raged and you find yourself being chased by situation and circumstances like Elijah was chased by Jezebel because the context of this story is he had been chased by Jezebel and he deadly wanted to die I mean he was like God kill me and in fact I was like, God, me, I'm up, I'm out. Man, I'm, Lord, we are done here. But of course we know that the Lord, uh, the Lord sent an angel, he came, he gave him the food, he refreshed. Now, he, in this particular case, he was in a cave. So the Lord comes, and of course in a still small voice, or in some version that the, when let says gentle whisper, he asked him gently, what are you doing here, Elijah? And to me, that I picture to be this kind of a situation where you find yourself tired, you find yourself fatigued, you find yourself in a situation where you don't know what to do, but the Lord just comes and you're in a date with him and he just encourages you. After this, we do know that, of course, he encouraged Elijah and he told him the next cause of, of action. He was to go and appoint Elisha to be his inherit, to be, uh, to be his successor, of course. So I find myself in that kind of situation, if you could be there and you find yourself in a kind of Elijah-like situation, and you just want to hear God. God, I just want to hear you. And he comes in a still small voice, but he comes so that he may encourage you and give you the direction and help you to look ahead and see that there is still hope at the end of the tunnel. Another guy, now it's in New Testament. Peter, Simon Peter, was a disciple of Jesus. John chapter 21, verse 15 to 18, as I wrapped this up. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know, I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know, 
I love you. Then take care of my sheep. Jesus, uh, Jesus said, at that time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt. <laughs> I love that. Peter was hurt. Jesus uh, uh, was hurt that Jesus asked uh, the question at that time. Anyway, he still responded. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, uh, verse 18, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself, you went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to, to go. Now, that was our guy, Mr. Mr. Peter. Now, Peter was an interesting dude because of the things that we, he used to do. Now, some of us, I think, if we were to have a date with God, there, God will really confront our hearts, our attitudes, our beliefs, our behaviors, our tendencies that perhaps we do not even know. Now, in this particular case, Jesus asked Peter three times if he Of course, Jesus knew. He knew. But why did he have to press Peter to uh, answer the question? Now, he was confronting his heart. And those three questions helped Peter to also confront his own heart. And he asked himself, by the way, truly, do I love Jesus more than I love my work? And the question would be, if God will sit here, he'll be asking you and me if you would be in a situation where Peter was. He'll be asking us, do you love me more than you love me? your job? Do you love me more than you love your spouse? Do you love me more than you love your girlfriend or your boyfriend? Do you love me more than you love the, the, the accolades and the fame and the populace and all that? Do you love me more than this? So this, put to yourself, it could be so many other things. Do you love me more than this? And in that kind of situation, God, God will really be looking at our hearts our attitudes, our beliefs, where are our hearts? Do we love God more than we love money? Do we love God more than we love our work? Do we love God more than we love? You know I mean, like, like he'll really be testing, do we surely love him? Now, the other thing is, of course, in relation to Peter, and, and I found very interesting, of course, in the process of God helping to us to, to come to terms with the condition of our hearts, because he's God, he already knows the condition of our hearts. So in the process of doing that, one amazing thing that will really come up is on the whole issue, because whenever we know ourselves who we really are, we, broke bef we break before God. We break before God. Now, and that's something that I found in Peter. And of course, Jesus' words to Kimali, Ziapo, Misho, Misho, and Sema, now somebody else will dress you up. Now, such that if God were to confront our issues of heart and we say, Lord, for sure we love you, and we lay it all down, then the next question maybe will be, or the next course of action will be, he will like us to go where we do not want to go. And sometimes the assignments and responsibilities that God gives us, they do not like much our expectations. They do not. And they could be tedious. They could be tiresome. They could be like, it doesn't make sense, Lord. It doesn't make sense. But still, the question that Jesus will be asking you is, do you love me more than your comfort? Do you love me more than the convenience? Do you love me more than you love the friends that you have around? Like, yeah, that would be the question. And so by Jesus asking us to reflect on the issues of our condition of our heart, he will also enable us to depend on him. He will also enable us to depend, to depend on him. And, of course, we will be having the confidence that where he leads us, um, it will be great time. Of course, it may not be very comfortable, but where he leads us, he will grace us to be there. So, those three men, of course, I could have shared more. We have Job, of course, whom... Of course, they had an encounter with God, and God confronts him and, and tells him, by this, stand up like a man, and I'm going to ask you a number of questions. And so by us having a date with God, there are a number of issues that will arise. Each of us, according to our needs, according to our needs, mark my words, according to our needs, not our wants, God will confront us in different situations. He will engage us differently. For those of us who are hurt, by the way, God will really just come and then, of course, to encourage you and to heal those 
wants. For those of us who are discouraged by life, God will come like Elijah was. God will come to encourage you. For those of us who are sick, by the way, God, you having a date with God will really mean that you're having a good time to be healed by him. You know, healed emotionally, physically, you know, spiritually, wherever we could be, a date with God will mean that all that I want, all that I need, God is able and is able to come through and to answer. To some of us, God will give us new ventures. To some of us, God will give us new responsibility. To some of us, it will really mean that he will have to take away our comfort and throw us out of our comfort zone so that we may live for his glory. A date with God. Now, interestingly, this may sound far-fetched, but it's actually a reality even in our day to day. And as I shared last Sunday about uh, your true north, a daily time with God. Why don't you make this time? Why don't you take this challenge and say, I'm going to be having a date with God on a daily basis. God, I'm going to have a date with you. Lord, a date with you. A date with you so that, Lord, whenever I find myself confused, God will be able to have your light, light up my path. God, if I find myself discouraged and disappointed, God, you are able to come and to heal me. If God, I'm able not to understand things as they are, Lord, you are able to just have me and have my simple mind understand. To some of us, God will really challenge us, you know, challenge our thinking. So you know, sometimes we think God's small. Our, 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 our thinking of God could be small, so God will really change our perspective. So a date, a date with God will really mean a lot of things to each and every one of us. And one thing that I know, it will be very transformative. You won't remain the same. And that is the challenge. So this won't be a very special thing, but make it a challenge. Make it a desire to have a date with God on a daily basis, because when you do have that, you won't miss the course of action. You won't be confused. Of course, God will be there to give you courage and you'll be a transformed man. So 2021, let's have as many dates as we can with God. And I do know that by doing so, we shall grow and we shall be productive. And as Jesus put it, we shall be fruitful vines to the glory and to the honor of your holy name. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so, so much. I did with you, God, Lord, will really mean a lot of things. A lot. And I pray that, Lord, you shall cause us to crave and to desire and to hunger to have just those moments, those those, those crazy, beautifully, wonderful moments with you, oh God. That, Lord, all that we have is that, Lord, you become the object of our attention, oh God. So, Father, I pray that this year, as a congregation of young people, wherever we are, and each and every person who is my audience today, that, Lord, we shall find ourselves in that place of just desiring, Lord, to be to be in your presence, God, to be in your presence, Lord, to be in your presence, so that, Lord, you make us to be more like you, so that, God, you may transform us and to make us to be godly and godly and godly, oh God, to the glory and to the honor of your name. So, Lord, as we do that, Lord, show us where we are, show us our attention, Lord Jesus, everything that becomes, that comes between us and you, Lord Jesus, I pray that you may take it away, that, Lord Jesus, your seat, oh God, my Father, in our life should not be taken by anything or by anyone, to the glory and to the honor of your righteous name. We thank you and we praise you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your love in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I can't help Manze to deserve for another date with God. So, let's have a dateful year. Let's, let's date God. Let's just date God. Let's just soak in Him. Let's just desire to be in Him. May the Lord bless you and do you good. I'm going for a date.